John tells us, way back in the first century, that the spirit of Antichrist was already working and there were many Antichrists. We must never forget that Satan is not equal and opposite to the Lord. We sometimes get this idea that there's a world of good and a world of evil and God is over the good world and the devil's over the evil world as if it's sort of an, an even-sided match. There's no question that Satan is a powerful creature, but he is a creature. He is not omniscient. That's why, down through the ages, there have been good Bible scholars who have said, that man there, Mussolini, or some pope, or this or that, that man is the Antichrist. Well, you say, how could they be so far wrong? I'm not sure they were very far wrong. Because, you see, Satan doesn't know when God's time is. So he always has to have somebody ready. And he's grooming him in the wings. And there's no doubt about it that Mussolini was anti-Christ, wasn't he? And so the old devil, he doesn't know when God's time is, so he always has someone ready. And if that was God's time, and the church was raptured, he'd push him out onto the center stage. But time passes, and the man dies. But meanwhile, the old devil is working with his man again, getting another one ready. So down through the ages, there have been many antichrists. There will be one great antichrist. But the devil is not omniscient, and he doesn't know when God's time is. So we recognize that even though the devil does his nefarious work, over him is the hand of God. And that God works good out of the devil's evil, doesn't he? You know that uh, there's a radio station at Monte Carlo which was built by Adolf Hitler to propound his nefarious propaganda across the Mediterranean. It's now used 24 hours a day to preach the gospel. And there are many such examples. We don't have to go to Monte Carlo, do we? We can look into our own hearts and lives. And we can see those times when, like Peter, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But in the overruling providence of God, God used that experience to purify Peter. And Peter was still sifted. But the result was very different to the one that the old devil wanted. You think of Job. Now, the devil wasn't after Job. Job was small potatoes. He was after God, wasn't he? If you take these things away from Job, he'll curse you to the face. That's what he wanted. He wanted to rob God of glory. But the end of the story tells us what happened. That God got more glory, greater glory, through the sufferings of Job. The grand example of this is the cross, isn't it? But at the cross, the old devil thought he had won his greatest battle, but in fact it was his death knell. He is not yet utterly defeated, but he's been knocked from his horse, and his crown lies in the dust. And one of these days, our Lord Jesus will have his last great battle with him, and he shall be cast out forever.